Hello again, and this time it's going to be a quick video isolating a very specific topic that came up in a conversation the other day. If you need an asset, and when I say asset, I mean like a logo or a template or something, which is relative in its location to the tool script that needs to retrieve that asset, how do you do that within your code? Well, if you're curious, keep watching, and also remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons, because we've got to make that YouTube algorithm work. So let's look at a really simple example of this. I'm going to make this logo here appear in my base editor. And I'm going to do this at the start, the same way I did it in the one editor to rule them all video, which if we jump over into the code is basically just putting a hard path in there straight from the root of my assets directory, assets, libraries, editor, library, editor, icon. And then I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to load the asset at the path. And then I'm just going to draw this. And this is a very basic editor that the editor you just saw derives off of. So you might be saying to yourself, well, this looks great. I mean, it all works and that's perfect. That's all I needed to do. Well, let's take a think about this. If it's in one of our libraries, like we see here, we've got it in the editor library. Let's say I copy and paste this between my projects. And let's say my libraries aren't in the same location relative to the assets root up the very top of my project as they are in the next one. Or let's say I give this library to somebody else and they put it somewhere else because they don't have the same project structure between each of their projects. Well, suddenly this hard path from the assets root doesn't look so good. But what we can notice is that the icon we're bringing in is always relative to the base editor. And unless somebody's going to come in and start ripping this apart when they take your library, it makes sense to basically use the relative path to the base editor location rather than the assets location. So let's do that. So if we jump back into our script, let's start editing things. Now we've got our logo GUI function here and we've got the path here, and that's where we're going to start working. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to find the script, this script, this base editor script in the asset database. And the way we do that is we get the GUIDs from the asset database. So we'll come in here we'll go asset database. We'll do find assets. And now what we need to do here is we need to set the filter. And I've gone through this several times in other videos and I'm sure you've watched them. If you haven't go back and check out my other videos, but basically here, we're saying we want type of script and the script we're looking for is the base editor we've got here. So that's great. That's going to return back the GUIDs to do with where that location is. We want to obviously be careful and just check that we are going to get those back because let's say we've gone and changed the name of this particular file, this particular script, and we've got to change that. Well, we don't want to then just basically get null references, etc. when we start trying to use this later. So now we want to pull in the location of that GUID. And the way we do that is we use asset database again, and we do GUID to asset path. There we go. And because we know there's a GUID there, because we've just done our checks, we'll use the first GUID that comes up. And this we could say would be the relative path. Great. Well, no, because that's actually going to return back the relative path of our script. And we don't want the script. We want the directory the script's at. And then we're going to combine the path to where our actual icon is. So to do that, we'll do, we won't do else. We'll do relative path equals, and we'll use path, which actually comes from the system IO, and I've got the library there, the system IO library, and it comes path, get directory name. And then we just give that the relative path. Excellent. So now we've got the directory, let's combine the directory with where our icon is. So we'll do relative path equals path dot combine. And then we'll take relative path and we'll use this. We're going to cheat and we're just going to quickly nab this down. 
because we won't need any of the rest because now it's relative and we'll do that there we go so it works in the path.combine and we'll paste that there great so now we've got our relative path and if i come into here i can change this path out for relative path i can save this come back into unity and if i press on my racer object here we can see my icon is still coming up because it's got the relative path that it's actually interested in so just to quickly break that down again we use the find assets of TypeScript with this base editor name of this script. We get the GUID from that. That GUID is then moved to asset database GUID to asset path. And then we get the directory, we combine that, and then we load it and we've got our logo again. And we can test that in Unity by dropping back in, coming into our library, and then we could just write something on the S here, on the end here. Let's just put guess on there. And now this folder's moved. It reloads our script assemblies, which means it gets rid of the static logo, et cetera. And it has to do it again when we go into the editor. When we come in, it's still there because it's being able to move around because it's relative to the actual script. So let's put that back. Now, this is just a simple example, loading a little icon into an editor. But you can imagine if you have a big tool set where Maybe you have prefab tiles that are tool accesses and they're all relative to where that tool script lives. Or maybe you have a script that dynamically creates code templates for you. And those templates are in text files and they happen to be relative to where the script is that actually loads those templates. So you can imagine all the sorts of extensions you can do with this particular ability. But let's not stop there. Let's get our scouts badge for efficiency and go a step further. Let's make this code even cleaner. Now we'll do this sort of code a lot in our tools where we want to find assets from the asset database. And weirdly, Unity hasn't given us anything yet, or I don't know of them giving us anything yet, where they could say, find assets, and it gives us the path straight back. It doesn't give us these GUIDs that we then have to do GUID to asset path. And also, these are great, these filters and everything, but we might want to have some of these set up that we use an awful lot so we don't keep having to remember, okay, this is type of script and I write it like this or having to look up where we've done it previously. Maybe we should just have an asset database extensions class, a static class that we can use to do this again and again and again with these. So let's jump back into Unity and here in our library, we'll create a folder and we're going to call this folder extensions. And we're going to chuck a script into here and we're going to call this asset database extensions. Voila. And we'll boot that up. And this is going to be a static class. It's not going to derive from mono behavior and we're going to get rid of all that. It is going to use the Unity Editor Library, and we don't need the Collections Library. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a function, a method that basically returns that path. So we'll grab this code that we're actually interested in, and we'll come back into here, and we go public static string get path, and we'll pass in a filter. And then we'll paste in the code there. And we're interested in the filter. And we want to return null. And if we have got it, great stuff. We'll return asset database. Good to asset path. And that's it. That's a great little static function that means that we don't have to remember that we've got to do the find assets and we've got to do good to asset path. And we've got those four lines and a very simple get path and we chuck it the filter. Let's go further. I use that script relative thing quite a lot throughout my tools. And I'm hoping after watching this, maybe you will too. So let's make a generic method to be able to do that. And if you don't know what generic methods are, they're awesome. Go check them out. I will leave a link in the description where you can learn a little bit more about them. But basically here, I'm making a generic method where I'm going to send in a class as the generic there. So return get path 
And now I'm going to put into here this here, this filter. So I'm basically using this method up here and I'm filling it in with this path. But of course, here I'm interested in the actual name of my type. So we'll come in here and we'll get the name of the type. Great. Now I can get a path to a script and I've just done all this section here in that quick little extension method. But we want the directory. So how about we put that in as well? And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm basically expanding my extension methods with things that I do on a regular basis. And this is what you should try and do as well in your libraries and just in your code in general. Expand them out so you make things nice and easy for you. Sometimes this is very helpful when you might forget how to do a math library or something like that. You're trying to remember in each project. Well, if you bring a math library with you and it happens to have an extension class and it's got all this stuff done already, you won't have to remember that long math that you hate trying to remember each time. So here we go. This time we're interested in get path to script. And we're going to return. If it's not null or empty, that is the relative path. Because if it is null or empty, we'll just return null. But we'll try and return if we've got it. Path. Oh, got to remember, I haven't imported the library. There we go. Path dot get directory name of the relative path. Job done. So now let's jump back into our base editor script and we'll use that library there. Now I'm actually in a namespace for my editor library. So let's just pop that in here. Make it nice and neat. There we go. And what we'll do here is we'll call in that extension class. So here we're going to do the relative path and we're going to use the asset database. And there we are, the extensions one we just wrote. And we're going to get the directory of the script. And the one we're interested in is base editor. And the great thing about this is if you go and change the class name, this will change as well. And therefore you don't have to worry about you've put this in a string, which is kind of handy. So now we'll come in here and we'll say if string is null or empty, relative path. And we're only interested in it if it's not null or empty. Well, that's awesome source. We'll come into here. We'll pump that in there. And that's it. Nice and neat. And we're using our extension class. And we can save this and we can save our asset database extensions, pop back into Unity and just double check it still works. So reload scripts. There we go. Pop it our eraser and it's still coming up. So that's a great way of bringing in functionality that you'll use on a regular into a nice little static class for you. And there you have it. Relative assets to scripts. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.